Brian Fratkin and Andy Polk. Welcome back to ABC Help Desk. I'm in a virtual world. What's up? What's up? What's up? Uh, my name is Andy Polk. I'm the founder and director of ABC Help Desk. Uh, ABC Help Desk is a network of advocacy experts and innovators and practitioners here to help you with your biggest challenges. Um, I want to, uh, and, and I myself am a practitioner working for the FDRA, which is a uh, footwear trade group, um, and I oversee our advocacy uh, strategies and implementations. Uh, I want to thank my partners in crime for this, sh- uh, helping me put this uh, this show on. What? what? Uh, Brian Fracken from Spark Influence, my hello. brother in crime. Hello, hello, hello. Nice to see you, but I can't see you. I'm in a virtual world. I guess we're going to find out why that we're is. We're going to find out why that is today. Uh, and then, of course, uh, my buddy Blake, uh, who uh, who's in the studio today. Uh, this is his studio, uh, running our sound and AV and everything else, uh, the media guru. Uh, with uh, with uh, Human Factor. Human yep. Factor, doing podcasts for associations. Associations for associations and podcasts associations. For associations, etc. So, hey, did you get in an accident? What's going on with your eyesight? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no. This, so I think one of the biggest things about, um, uh, one of the biggest challenges in advocacy is understanding technology um, and how you take commercial technology and actually implement it for advocacy, but, but do it appropriately in a, in a way that, makes a huge impact and doesn't really hit your budget. And I think a lot of people are afraid uh, or don't understand VR and uh, augmented reality um, and how to, how to do it. Yeah. Um, so this pod, this podcast, this, this vlog or, or whatever our live show is for this uh, really is about kind of unpackaging these technologies and, and making them real. So right. I'm going to take off this headset. So, Oh, oh, it's really bright in here. Love it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right. And, uh, for anyone who's listening to the podcast, this whole time, Andy's been wearing a VR headset. For days, I've been walking around with this thing on. Welcome back to the real world. Yeah, hey, thank you very much. Uh, I like this world a lot better, Oh, personally. Okay. All right, well, that's, that's okay. <laughs> Fine, then. Fine. So, I mean, it, people have seen these before, and, and maybe a few people have tried them. Many people have not, but people can't seem to understand how to, like, really use this technology and Huh. And advocacy, right? Right. Um, I mean, look, what I love about one, about these little quick hit shows that we're doing are like unpacking the technology. Yeah. And today it's talking about virtual reality, yep. augmented reality. Yep. We're sitting here with an Oculus. Right. For those of you that don't know. Oculus it's, it's Go. Like Oculus, Oculus Go. Oculus Go. It's like 200 bucks. 200 bucks. Now, I think. 150. Yeah. Even oh, better. Dropped. Right. Maybe. Oh. Small, easy. Put it in a case. Take it with you. It's not that tough. It's simple to do. And then we take it with us and it tells a story. It does tell a story. It brings a story to life that is from a far off galaxy just like star wars but <laughs> it's not star wars it's real life okay um so let's let's talk about how to use it in advocacy because i think a lot of people don't understand how to use it right. or misapply it or god forbid they spend 50 or seventy five thousand dollars with a firm to do it yes which is ridiculous all of those things ridiculous yes so um i've got a quick powerpoint deck that uh i actually have spoken on this at several conferences for grassroots professional network um thanks to josh and joe um and also um with the public affairs council at their um advocacy summit right um which was in florida um earlier this year um thanks to nick for setting that up um and i spoke on the panel uh with mike from the beekeeper group um Mm -hmm. and they had actually done some virtual reality work um previously as well and and i think beekeepers are great just in terms of storytelling but advocacy for me as a practitioner and and my whole career really comes down to storytelling i mean being a hill staffer for nine years having some terrible (laughs) meetings some of the worst meetings that was some of the best actually if you want to talk about like ripple effect it's like have a bad meeting and we'll actually talk about you more right right it's like right right (laughs) you know you're at a happy hour trying to say who had the worst meeting of the day instead of the best meeting right and the if you had a great meeting then that that was also the thing was like you wouldn't believe who i met with today right like i'll never forget the meeting i had with general dynamics on uh on lasers that they right. were trying to put on navy ships. Lasers? Yeah, literally lasers. Right? Literally lasers. And I think they're, it's now happening, but 
But I love that is is you get too many times where folks come in and they're like, all right, well, we've got our story to tell and here it is. Right. And they slap down a PDF that's six pages long yep. and, and you're sitting in the meeting with the staffer yep. going through page by yep. page by page. Here's the second bullet point on right. the stats. And it's the it's like taking in a, a, a PowerPoint presentation and reading the content off yep. of the PowerPoint slide. So that's like, what I'm going to do right now, actually. But imagine <laughs> how bad that is in a meeting with like your boss and you're like, yeah. all right, here's our PowerPoint. We're just going right. to read everything off right. the slides. You don't do that. Yeah, right. right. You got to tell the story yep. that shows an image. Then you talk about it. Right. And so this is what it is. This is a tool. It doesn't replace your stories. It enhances you're, them. You're pointing at a, a, at a thing. This yeah, is the exactly. tool being in the VR. Headset. The VR headset. Yes. That's right. This exactly is a podcast right. too, remember. Oh, yes. Thank you. That's why Blake's here. To That's why Blake's honest, here. Right? So, uh, All right, you, so want, you want me to show this picture? Yeah. Throw the slide up so everybody can see All right, it. You're good. All right. So um, I just want to. First of all, people just need to understand the difference in, in the technologies. So virtual reality is is when you're actually wearing like a headset that completely obstructs your view and puts you in a virtual environment. Um, and it's controlled inside the headset, right? So you bring things to life. And right now, virtual reality is really becoming really big in sports. Um, and I think, you know, that is going to be the the huge driver commercially and in, in the technology will socialize the people because right now you can watch an NBA game courtside courtside with a headset, which is pretty amazing. Brilliant. Um, the NFL is putting in hundreds of millions of dollars now into augmented reality and virtual reality. Right. So this isn't for for me. You know, maybe a year ago, I was wondering, is this a fad that we're looking at? Right. Um, and I think I think you know, again, I'm holding this headset, but I think. Even this headset will transform in a few years to where it's a little bit less clunky, right? Um, and it could be something a little bit different. But this is the base of where we're at and where we're headed. And people mm -hmm. are investing huge amounts of money into making virtual reality work and function, give it a different experience and right. and different settings. And we'll talk about some of that. And then augmented reality, in essence, is uh, we all kind of know it from maybe Pokemon Go or or something like that. <laughs> How long but did you Pokemon Go? I oh, never man. did. I never did it. Um, but in essence, you take uh, take your phone or some device right. um, and you superimpose graphics over what you're looking at. Right. Mm -hmm. So it, it you, you drop in something for us. I've done shoes and we'll, right. sh we'll show that. Right. Um, but it, pr it projects something into a real space and right. it creates just something a little different and unique. And it kind of tells a story in a different way. So um, real quick, I want to just show some some examples of use uh, by oh, some brands. Great. Yeah. I so, love this one. so this is Pepsi Max. Um and Pepsi set up a, um, an augmented reality kind of TV screen at a bus stop uh, in London. And uh, you've got people who, um, and, and they, they recorded across the street watching people interact. But basically, there was a screen there and it's completely clear. And they used augmented reality to add um, uh, objects that were coming in. So that first one was an asteroid that came in and the one right. was freaking out. Another one is... The lid's popping off, and there's an octopus <laughs> grabbing people going down the hole. It's freaking people out. Um, Aliens showing up. Yeah, so you can do a lot of fun, funky things. That is so um, uh, and, and just, But it, it's all about experience, right? Making things a little bit different. Making people right. remember um, what you're doing. So... Um, yeah, no, it's so, cool. Yeah, so, so I, that's just a, a quick example of, of what it's right. doing. But people will remember that as Pex... They'll go tell their family and friends, right? Of course. I mean, ultimately, right. good advocacy is about spreading it out beyond right. just your your person to someone else. So, right. it's a good example. Um, it's happening right now in in uh, shopping stores where you can use augmented reality to try on different shoes or different clothing items right. and, and mirrors. Um, virtual makeup. Um, some of my favorites here Ikea, are IKEA. Yeah. I mean, the other day we like actually were looking to buy a chair for our dining room right. and we put the chair in the there. dining room and said, does it look good? Yeah. Okay. Right. Then we're going to buy it. Right? right. So, um, Ikea does this. Amazon is now doing this and targets now doing this and target is interesting because they're actually doing it on the web base. You don't need the app. Oh, nice. So you oh, can yeah. actually, yes. So the difference is usually you have an app for this and you, you run your augmented reality through an app, but now with the technology and, and eventually 5g getting here where, where it means our speeds are going to be super fast. You can just do it online and it's just a seamless experience. Right. You need to download anything. Right. And that's um, sort of the little barrier that's there right now. It's not a big one, but it's right. just in terms of, and it's, it's almost where, where QR codes were 10 years ago, right? right? The little codes that if you hover your phone over that's it, right. it points you somewhere. There's a barrier. 10 There's years ago, it was, I had to have an app that did that. Now Google and, or sorry, the iPhone builds it into the camera. And that's so right. I just open the camera and if it sees one, it recognizes it. And so I imagine in years to come, yep. it'll be something similar of, okay, great. I'm here. Here's the camera. And sort of like, you know, the custom keyboards that mm -hmm. you have on your keyboard. Yep. I imagine 
imagine that we'll have something like that, like custom photo lens or custom this. Yep. And you just hit the button while you're in the camera. Right. And then it'll open up that app yep. within the camera. Yeah, we don't even know where it's headed. Right. But right now it is. It, there's a transition from that barrier. It's breaking right. it down. And here's a good example, too. Um, I think this is Porsche, but Porsche is starting to use augmented reality in their window shields. The heads-up displays, yeah. That's right. So instead of looking at your dash like you normally would when right. you're driving to see your speed or where you're headed, this would basically plug in your speed, the speed of what you should be doing, yeah. um, and then directions. Yeah. So your Google Maps would pop up, and there would be a directional field of, of where you should go. Right. Um, and that actually is being tested out right now and, and in the future is going to be deployed. Um, there's a group I work with called PTC. It's a major technology company. And this is kind of why I know a lot about the different products. Cause I work on different projects, uh, at our association, uh, with innovative companies, but, um, they have one that is, um, uh, in essence used for training. Um, so in one instance, if you're, if you're going out to a factory or facility and you've got to fix the machine and you're not that well versed where the belt it. is, you can take, um, their, um, uh, their chalkboard, I think is what it's called. And you can, you take it and you show where it is and it calls back to the main technician in the headquarters and there's, they will circle where the belt is that you need to change and tell you in real time. This was, cool. the one, this was the one you were telling me about with like grandparents and, and remote controls. Yeah, so if you look on the remote control <laughs> on our screen, it's circle there, really? right? That's how yeah. it works. And so, yeah, in essence, when I was doing a, a demo with these guys who developed it, they were basically <laughs> like, you know, this is a huge application for grandma and grandpa Absolutely. or mom and dad. Right. Um, you know, when we were growing up, our, our grandmother would call us and be like, the microwave's broken. And it's right. like, the microwave's not broken. You just have to hit the <laughs> I right I can't buttons, turn on right? the TV. Or the VCR, right? And yeah. now this is the same thing. It's like the TV remote doesn't work or this isn't working or right. my, my Roku thing is broken. <laughs> and so this is a, this is, allows you to take a, a technology – um, and if they hover it over the device uh, itself, then you can circle where the buttons are right, to use. Right, touch right? this first, hit right. that next. So yeah. um, here's some examples of, of AR used in advocacy as we see it. And, and Brian and I have talked about it and Blake and I have talked about it. We're just trying to, we're trying to think about applications and use in the future. Right. And no one's really developed any platforms to, to make this a reality. There's a lot of money that you still have to pour into getting some of these things done. So one of those is directing your advocates to the Hill on their meetings, right? So you've probably seen that commercial where the bank has those arrows on the That's ground. Right. You're following yep. your financial path or whatever. Right. Um, hopefully not every cliff. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you said it. <laughs> but in essence, imagine if you could use something where um, if there's a flying app that you could plug in augmented reality and right. their next meeting comes up and it actually gives them directions on right. the floor so they don't get lost in Rayburn. Mm -hmm. And I, I still get lost in Rayburn. I, we all do, right? I, I think people who work in Rayburn get lost yes. in Rayburn, right? Mm -hmm. I, I'm pretty sure there's probably a staffer that's still like wandering around <laughs> at midnight trying to find their way that's out, right. right? That's right. Definitely interns. Um, <laughs> but using that for directional purposes so that there's a lack of frustration and there's an ease of use. You could also use it to, um, and Brian and I have talked about this, but the placards for members. Love that idea. Where you could, you could scroll over the placard and a video comes up from that member right. explaining who they are, what they're passionate about any right. kind of issues that's current anybody that's place. ever been in congress right if, or, or in the halls of congress you walk down the halls and all it is is placard and flag right. placard and flag right. placard and if i don't know who they are i don't right. know what they stand for i don't exactly. know where they stand on my issues exactly so something like ar where i can hover that camera over their placard and get this menu like you've got on augment your right. prop to bring issues to life that's right get a menu of you know here are my latest speeches here's right. where i stand on these issues so i don't feel like i have to walk in but at least i get a good idea that's of who right they are. Conversely, if you're an association, you're doing a fly-in, yeah. you could you could augment all those different meetings that you're having. Right. So before they went in to have the meeting, your talking points were built into a video exactly. that come up over right. that. And they're like, you're meeting with AOC today, right. and she's new in Congress, right. and she's super passionate about climate <laughs> change Excellent. issues. and. Right. Yeah. Here's the things we need you to do. And right. so it, it visually reminds them, it yeah. stimulates their mind as soon as they walk in. It's like, here's the talking points. Here's the voting 100%. scorecard, things like that, which which in advocacy software we do, right? We right. have that data for you, but how do we make it back into the story? Right. And that's sort of the humanizing the data part, which is why I love the VR and the AR yeah. concept is taking the, the numbers right. and bringing them back to life right. for the for the decision maker. Yeah. And so that the two things there, one is the augment your prop brings it to life. So this is uh, obviously like a cup of coffee and, and this is commercial application. You choose some things, but right. imagine any kind of device or any kind of product that you may have as an association or a group that you're trying to a talk shoe. about. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you literally drop the object down and use augmented reality to give that staff 
offer. Right. Choose your own adventure to learn about what we're talking about today, exactly. right? Like, cho- you tell me what is most interesting to you so that I don't bore you with the other nine topics and we only <laughs> talk about what you actually care about, right? Well, I love it. You bring in something that they're familiar with, maybe like the shoe you bring with you, and then right. you can augment the shoe. The, right. the, the airplane, the you know, the, whatever good it is that you're producing. Right. So bring, you're saying, what you're saying is you could do it like, like or bring the shoe in, oh, you don't like that? Right. Well, check it out. What if we did this? Right. right. So or, it, cha- it changes the st- it, it it allows you multiple stories and it allows you to see what they wanted to right. learn about. Yeah. And then that way you focus the meeting on what they actually care about. So they actually listen mm-hmm. and they may actually do something for you versus you boring them to death with, with <laughs> a sheet that doesn't that tells them nine things they don't care about. And the one thing that they do and you didn't even touch on the one yep. thing that they do. Care that about. actually matters. Exactly. Right. right. Yep. So there's that. Um, and then, of course, you can augment your handouts to bring them to life. This is actually an app for the White House where if you scroll over a dollar bill, the there's like a tour that I think it's too tchotchke myself. It's just too car- cartoonish. But the idea is if you do have those handouts and um, you could you could build an app and then you could deploy that app um, across um, any of your meetings. And so the handout that you give them, they could use the staffer could download it and, and, and scroll over it and bring right. that story to life, a yep. video or something like a personal story from one of your grassroots or something like that. Um, and then last, which is probably way out of all of our price range, but like creating a virtual store or a virtual facility with pop-up issues. Yeah. So we, Blake and I've talked about creating a virtual store for like convenience stores where you yeah. walk through and it's like, you scroll over a product and it's like, here's a typical price. Here's the, all the supply chain costs. Here's the tariffs because tariffs are huge right now, obviously right. for everyone. Here's the tariff costs that, 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 that are associated for, for this product that you yeah. may not even, and it breaks out all these different or nutritional value or sustainability or, right whatever it is that you care about, but you can build the store and take someone through um, in, in an office yeah. through yeah. a virtual facility like that. A manufacturing that. So, plant, a farm, a store, whatever it might right. be. And this is one we actually did. I, I use uh, Sketchfab, um, and anybody can go to Sketchfab. And Sketchfab, in essence, is like... Um, what are we looking at? This is a this is an augmented reality. I, I scanned I, myself. I scanned a, a, a mini shoe in our office. It's like an UGG. It's an UGG <laughs> with FDRA's logo all over it. Um, and I scanned it in our office, and then I literally took it down to the White House. Um, uh, and I'll go back and I'll hit it again just so people can see it. And I went out of the White House and I just dropped it, and I re- I re- screenshotted my uh, my iPhone, and then I sent Trump a tweet. It was the first augmented reality advocacy message ever. Um, just to get, just to break through with something different. I did that with USTR and, and commerce and a few others just to break through the normal noise. Right. Cause I think when we're advocating to policymakers, it's typically a letter. Yeah. It's like, well, we're going to write them a letter. And it's right. like, okay, I'm sure they'll read it. Right. Maybe. Uh, um, but if you're sending a message and you augment something in that way and you drop it, yeah. Well, it's I just think, something different. Well, um, I, I think we and get that back, costs nothing, by the way. No, exactly. No cost. Uh, we got to get back to the basics, right? The basics, and we'll talk more about this on on our other shows. But the basics are: how do we get the data to tell a story, right? right. And then how do we make that story compelling, right. right? And the letters and the phone calls and the tweets and all of that are great, right. and we need to do it. You right. absolutely need to. Right. But you have to do a multifaceted effort, right? And it can't just be that. You need the numbers, you need the quality, and the quantity, right? And so you get the quantity of the numbers, of the letters, right. the phone calls, and tweets, so and the stories. We, and this is where the quality this comes is, in. This is not replacing the stories. This By is no enhancing means. it. Right? Exactly so right. So what I keep reinforcing that. Here's an example of, of VR in use commercially. This is, uh, All right, that's this pretty is a, cool. a Decker yeah, store. They actually built this whole store out. Decker's um, a shoe store. Decker's is a shoe store. They have Teva, Ugg, uh, Hoka, um, Sanook. Uh, so they have a number of different So it's, it's somebody out. like. This costs a lot of money to build this out. I was going to say, out. this is someone picking shoes. Look, in a store. That's right. Right. Um, so they, they built out a store to test it out. And somebody <laughs> having a lot of fun throwing shoes around, which is pretty cool. Um, but this is a lot of money and a lot of work uh, to build something like that. And I don't think um, it, VR needs to be used that way. Here's what I think VR needs to be used for in advocacy. Right. Um, uh, I think, in essence, uh, Blake kind of coined this term, but like booth bait. Right. So it's yeah. like we've got these booths up at these trade shows. Right. We're super boring compared to what people are actually buying and doing in, in their business world and their actual jobs. And we're sitting there being like, why don't you come by and help us advocate? And they're like, right. no, thanks. Good work, guys. Like, all the, I'm with you 100%, right. but right. I just got to go down this way because right. they got beer yep. or they yep. have snacks. They yep. have snacks or, you know, I, I actually am going to steal a million dollar deal. So, I, you know, good luck. This is great. Right. Yeah. We'll talk later. Uh, so it's like, how can we grab those people that come by the booth? And so, VR using VR 
Um, and we'll talk a bit about how you do it in a second and deconstruct it. But basically, you take a 360 video of a facility or an event, and especially here in D.C., and describe what we do in D.C. Right. And you can pull them in and get them more involved. So you're yeah. expanding your reach. You're finding mm-hmm. new people in grassroots that you might not have before. Right. Um, you boost pack contributions, which I think is the biggest ROI for this technology, is actually um, describing what you do on a daily basis and how important it is that somebody give to the organization right. as a member or to the pack mm-hmm. uh, to help push certain issues. Uh, and so you can see direct ROI on that. Um, you can use it to train advocates ahead of fly-in. So if there's meetings on the Hill, yeah. A lot of people are really nervous about going to Capitol Hill and meeting with members or senators because it's just not an environment they're used to. It se- to them, it seems like it raises to a, a severe level of seriousness that they have to be always on point yep. and buttoned up and like they can't miss a beat and they can't say something wrong and there's all this pressure. Um, and if you could train them uh, on, a, on a mock meeting yeah. before they fly in and send it down to them right. and let them put something on and see it, then it creates a comfort so they yeah. know what they're walking into, literally. Absolutely. Yes. Um, and then the last point, um, which Blake and I are actually working on, is taking policymakers to your facility virtually. So it's if you're- or your country or your area. It, everywhere, whatever. anywhere and everywhere. But yeah. in essence, if you can think of uh, a member from New Jersey yep. uh, on um, energy and commerce, and there's a healthcare facility in Montana that's doing some really innovative things, and you need them to understand about your facility because you're asking for grants, you're asking for appropriations, sure. or you're, you're making an ask of the committee, that member will never fly to Montana. No. And as much as you talk about the data and stats and, and stories, which right. are great, it may not break through. But if what if you did a virtual tour of that facility, brought it, gave it to the policymaker, and yep. let them see it yep. in, in, in a visual setting – um, for just a few minutes, um, I think that would be something that would really break through. So. Well, uh, you know, we talk about this, but advocacy is about personal experience. It's about storytelling. It's about et cetera. And so so with that, I love the training and the fly-in one yep. because there are some fantastic folks out there doing advocate training. Right. And it's amazing. Right. But imagine being able to supplement that with a video that they could be part of beforehand with right. something like this, a, an experience they could be part of beforehand. So. You know, a lot of associations will come in and they'll, they'll hire somebody to do the training right before they go to the hill. Right. And that's great. But think about spending only a few thousand dollars more and being able to, to do a training anywhere right. before they even got to the hill right. so that the training they did then was only in, you know, was, was the last minute tweaks instead of the first minute explanations. Right. right? And so they're going in even more prepared. Right. And both the, the CMF and others have said, look, here's the deal. Better trained people on the front end mean better related stories, mean better outcomes. Exactly right. Yeah. Exactly right. And this is the the last shot is the booth bait uh, kind of kind of picture. <laughs> um, uh, this we actually work with Deckers and did this at a show and people were lined. How'd up. it work? How'd it go? People were lined up to go in and just test out this VR stuff, and we engaged with people we had never met with before. Right. Got to tell them about who we were and what we were doing. Right. Um, and it had huge dividends for us, and still has huge dividends because we all of a sudden became seen as someone that's actually cool and they want to stop by and chat with versus Innovative. just someone yeah. walk to walk by. Right. right. So, um, and as we wrap up really quickly, um, I, I think this, here's some key points when you think about the VR stuff. Um, 80% of all internet, uh, it, traffic is video. Viewers retain 95% of a message when they watch it in video. VR is in essence, 360 degree video. Yep. Right. Um, and it's really difficult to do. Um, but it breaks through with policymakers, um, when when time and travel budget are an issue to go see facilities for yep. members, this is a great way to do it, to bring it to them. Um, you're not reaching your full, full advocacy base unless you're doing something like this where you can yeah. be innovative and engage. Um, and it's kind of a branding play on ROI. Uh, and I mean, when we talk about people being visual these days, it's, it's, not, just, it's not just millennials that are visuals. That's it's right. a, a president that's, uh, that's really... Bring really the story to the people. Bring exactly. the story to the elected officials so, and then get them both I, to tell the And I do want to go story. through uh, just quickly. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of deconstruct this really quickly. VR, how's this done? You need a 360 degree. If you want to do this yourself. Call you us. You want to do it yourself. Well, you could call <laughs> us at vradvocacy.com. Uh, Blake and I are actually working to set up a company um, to test this out and, and prove it out. We've already got a couple of people who are working with. Um, if someone comes to you and says they can make a VR video for anything over fifteen to twenty thousand dollars, anything over that, walk away. There's no point in working with them. They don't know what they're well, talking if, if about. You, unless you want, like, really, if you're if you're a theme park, 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly right. If you want like the super super in depth features. If you're swimming in money, then right. go for it. But Blake and I are, are trying to make this a very affordable experience that people can use. Um, and we're trying to build it here in DC so that we can um, we can we can give uh, uh, pack managers some tool at right. a, a, at a booth right. that they can use to engage people at yeah. headquarters or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I think that, again, that's where the real ROI is, is saying, yeah. if you use this uh, if you use this technology and we can build out uh, a video for you to use in, the, in a virtual reality experience, um, if you spend X amount, of done, X amount of dollars, you will get X amount back. And, right. and then obviously at that point, it's like, then you're finding new people and you're, so it's kind of a no brainer. But if you wanted to do it on your own, it's a little bit difficult, but you need a 360 camera. You need software to edit and mix it. And this is this is advanced software. This isn't typical <laughs> video software because you're looking at 360 in pixelation. Right. right. You also need um, you need audio. You're um, right. Yeah. Well, because Blake always points out, and he's 100 percent right. Audio is the most important part of the audio experience. Yeah. Right? You want to see? Yeah. If someone's you want to see why? Yeah. Go ahead. There you go. <laughs> oh, Where'd he go? <laughs> All right, the show's taking a new turn. Andy Polk it's, has been it's turned Kelly's off. It's Kelly's dream come true. <laughs> turned off. Um, you need so so you can do it on your own. And here's a few items you can look at it and see online uh, that we're looking at. And then for AR, really quickly, AR is actually much easier than um, than doing virtual reality. Uh, you can bootstrap it yourself. I mentioned Sketchfab. It's an, in a, in essence, it's an online community of people who've made 3D renderings. And through their software app, you can actually just literally take a product and uh, and drop it anywhere you want. Um, if you look, uh, there's a there's technology where if you have a physical product, you can scan it yourself. I did that with our boot. Um, but in essence, you need a 3D model and you need something to deliver it, right? So uh, Sketchfab can do some of that and send it out. Um, and I always tell people, whatever you're doing, make sure you figure out how to do the marketing side, well, obviously, exactly to right. spread it out. But here's uh, the example of... I, I went on Sketchfab and found a forklift and I thought to myself, and actually I did this in studio a while back, but I was like, what if I was a warehouse operator and wanted to go to a member of Congress and explain <laughs> so how Andy I drive a forklift? Has a forklift in my studio. So I literally dropped a forklift in the studio and you can make it big or small and you can spin it all the way around. But in essence, as you're talking about how important it is to be trained on a forklift, they're actually looking at a forklift in the member's office. Right. I can drop it on their desk right, so they right. can see it. And then right? point to the different pieces. Yeah. All right. So uh, there's some other tips to, to VR. Uh, I won't go through those uh, really quickly, but I'll just leave them up there. If you're interested, uh, definitely give us a call. If you're interested in, in VR AR, we can help you with that. That's what this whole network's about, is about helping out That's um, right. our fellow advocates That's on right. understanding this stuff. Not to be afraid of it, but also... Okay. Not to make um, the wrong decisions and working with the wrong people and sure. doing this, but stuff. deconstructing the technology, exactly, letting them know so, how easy it is. Um, and I always go back. This is the last slide that we'll show for the show today. But again, I want, I always want to go back to this because it, it's always the base. Yeah. It's the foundation of everything we do in advocacy. Is this? These immersive tools can can take good advocacy to great advocacy, but great advocacy is telling a great story, right? And having it retold by the policymakers and staff over Start and over with again. a good story and then figure out how you're going to tell it. That's right. And that's so what, what this does. Whether you use this or not, that's fine. Yep. But I'm telling you, this is pretty cool. And yeah, it can be is. very effective, yeah. right? Absolutely. So, um, folks, this is obviously Help Desk. Uh, we are doing a number of shows trying to deconstruct uh, different technologies and different issues and different ideas. Uh, today, we did not have a guest because we just wanted to sit around and chat. Sometimes that, that's the funnest thing to that's do. And um, and you can get a lot of good ideas that way. But uh, but if you do have questions on AR VR, just drop us a line. We're at advocacyhelpdesk.com. Uh, there's a form on there. You can ask any question you want. I'm happy to tell you how to do it if you want to try it out yourself uh, or if you want to work with vradvocacy.com. Um, you can do that too. And uh, we can explain how we set it all up and do it all for you. Um, and w- what a game changer it is. So, Blake, did I miss anything? Nope. Take us out. All right. Let's do it. Folks, until next time, this is Advocacy Help Desk. Please visit advocacyhelpdesk.com. We've got a full resource library of all our shows on there. You can ask any question on any challenge that you have. We'll find uh, the correct person to connect with you, and they'll give you free advice or support or mentorship if you're new to the industry. Um, And so with that, I want to thank uh, Brian Fracken with Spark Influence. I want to thank Blake with Human Factor doing podcasts. Uh, for a, a range of associations. Exactly. Right. Um, until next time, folks, AHD is O U T. Out. Peace. <laughs>